I chain smoke and I say fuck a lot. But I accept myself for the way I am. I accept you too. Viewer discretion advised. Hopefully by now, most of you have seen Quiet on Set, the four-part series that premiered on March 17, 2024. It was two episodes that night, Sunday, and two episodes on the 18th, the next day. Well, on the 19th, which would be Tuesday, Dan Schneider had to sit down and interview with one of his former cast members. So naturally, I immediately started working on a video about it all. But two days later, on March 21, 2024, I woke up in the middle of the night with a fever, fought that off, and slept for 36 hours. And then by Sunday, was admitted to the hospital. That would be the 24th of March. And they wouldn't let me leave. They liked me, I guess. But it was hell on me because I was there for almost a week. And I don't like being confined to a bed. But I'm starting to feel better. It wasn't because I was sick or anything. People know that I had a couple leg injuries over the last year. And well, I guess one of them got infected, so that sucked. But I got out the day before yesterday, and I was starting to feel a little better. So back to it, I'm sure both Quiet On Set and Dan Schneider's rebuttal have been talked about widely, because it's been a week, like I said. So I'll keep it kind of short, but I did want to document it. Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Bow on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about uh, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack, um, but before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss, is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. And obviously this feels quickly rushed, like a PR move. I mean, maybe they planned on doing that because of course the info was out. It's kind of like the cast of Boy Meets World having to do that podcast episode about Brian Peck and they put it out about a month before the series comes out and then Dan Schneider immediately the day after it comes out does a little PR sit down now you've written hundreds of episodes thousands of jokes have been told yeah but currently where we are uh -huh. some people think that some of those jokes are inappropriate for children uh -huh. what do you think of that all these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny mm. and only funny, okay? Um, now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens and they're looking at them and they're saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid show. Mm. And I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show. Just like I would have done 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like The more people who like the show, the happier I am. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show that needs to be cut because it's upsetting somebody, let's cut it. So I think it's big for you to say with your work, mm -hmm. if it's viewed as that today, you don't have a problem. Cut it. Cut it out. Get out of here. <laughs> And here he calls Jeanette McCurdy a liar. That said, let's talk about some of the things that have just been swirling forever. Okay. You were banned from your set. Never, never, never happened. That is a false rumor. What happened? Add it to the list of false talk rumors. Talk to me, what happened? 
they were adult actresses at the time, and they had their own specific reasons for not wanting to do the show anymore. Mm. I'm not judging that. It got tense, and what they don't know, maybe, is I did everything I could to make that show go away. My producer partner at the time, we would call and say, this is a not a good situation. Okay. So I, I decided I'm going to do what most showrunners do, which is, you're not on the set. There's a director there to shoot it. I'll go up to the writer's room. I'll work on the next script. But yeah. because everybody was so used to me caring about every detail of every show so yeah. much, for me not to be on the set, yeah, maybe some people thought I got banned. So it was more of an assumption because this guy's usually here and now he's not. I don't know if it was an assumption. I don't know if somebody thought they were making me look bad by saying I got banned uh, from the set. I have no idea. Okay. All I know is I was never banned from the set. Yep. The creator has gotten in trouble from the network for accusations of his emotional abuse. I feel like it's been a long time coming and should have happened a lot sooner. I appreciate the amount of trouble he's gotten in. It wasn't just a slap on the wrist sort of thing. It's to the point where he's no longer allowed to be on set with any actors, which makes communication in between takes complicated. The creator sits in a small cave-like room off to the side of the soundstage, surrounded by piles of cold cuts, his favorite snack, and Kids Choice Awards blimps, his most cherished life accomplishment. He watches our takes on four separate monitors, one for each camera, that are set up in his lair. Whenever he wants to give us a note, he tells it to an assistant director, who then has to run across the entire soundstage to give it to us. So our shoot days went from about 13 hours to about 17. The general onset vibe these days can best be described as malaise meets dear God, please, let's get this over with. And here he brings up Ryan Peck and Drake Bell, and you get to hear a little of his acting skills. Probably been a while. The darkest part of this series discuss child predators. Now, I want to make sure that we clear a couple of things up. Okay. Brian Peck was not hired by you. No, I did not hire Brian Peck. This was a Tolan Robbins production? Yeah. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. Mm. And I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? Which Drake mentioned in the show that we watched last night. And next, I heard that he went to court when this guy was being tried, Peck. And when Drake walked in, he saw 50 people sitting on the side of the courtroom supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters for Peck, character letters, praising him for who he was and asking for leniency, and they knew that he was guilty. They knew he had confessed to some degree, mm -hmm. and they still did this. It's just, that's baffling that adults would do that. Yeah. And I don't know if people know this, but Drake's mom, a lovely woman who I stay in contact with this day, she came to me at the time and she said, Dan, I'm not good with words like you are. And would you help me with my speech for the judge? And I said, of course, and I did. And he ended up going to prison and serving his time. And yeah, that was probably the darkest part of my career. And here's the kicker that I really don't get. After he got out of prison and was, to my knowledge, a registered sex offender, he was hired on a Disney Channel show. I, I, I don't understand that. Um, I never, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing it, man. He may or may not have hired Brian Peck. He says he didn't. But Brian Peck was on a show that he was in for a while, oddly enough, with Matthew Perry called Home Free. They aired one season in 1993. Let's take a look. Matt, you okay? Yes, go, go. I think you'll be great, my boy. Just great. <laughs> so you'll start first thing in the morning. Huh? I'll see you then, Tiger. Really? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. <laughs> What are you going to tell that other guy when he comes into work tomorrow? No, Matt, that's my problem. 
to say, I really appreciate the job and all, but I still got to get six bucks for those sandwiches. <laughs> Don't stand there grinning like an idiot. Pay the boy. So if you go to IMDb, you go to collaborations, put in Brian Peck, Dan Schneider. Number one, all that, 1994 through 2020. That's obviously a typo. Number two, The Amanda Show, 1999-2002. Number three, What I Like About You, 2002-2006. Good Burger. 1996-2023. That's what the fuck? That's wrong, too. Keenan and Kel, number five. 93-95. Number six, The Mommies, 1993-1995. Number seven, Guys Like Us, 1998 through 1999. That's the one where Brian Peck was a clown, Mr. Happy Pants. Number eight, Home Free, 1993. So they had eight things they were together in. The rest seemed to be just episodes from these things. And other things like Quiet on Set. I'm sure there are more because IMDB is never usually complete. But it is pretty accurate for the most part. But again, that doesn't mean he was hired by Dan Schneider. They were just on a lot of shit together. I think I know what this is. Well, first of all, who are you? I'm the sex ed teacher. I've read about this happening in other places. Look, it can't be stopped. It's horrible. It's like a plague. Our school has been contaminated with the gay. Since Quiet on Set aired, some other actors have come out. I know I haven't seen them all, but just little tidbits here and there, nothing crazy. But Donkey Lips did, because he was in a movie with Brian Peck called The Willies. You won't see Brian Peck's name on the credits for acting, but you will see his name as a writer, director, and producer for the 1990 film The Willies. Which Donkey Lips, his real name is Michael Bauer. I just like the name Donkey Lips. And, you know, I'm kind of older, so I really don't know much about anything from Nickelodeon after, like, I don't know, 97, 98. But I did watch Flute Your Shorts. Donkey Lips talks a little of his experience on the movie. I did Brian Peck's house, and I saw some interesting stuff. Because I was into the horror comic book since I was going to do the movie and stuff, whatever. But during this audition, wherever it was, I can't truly remember... Um, I was asked a, a series of questions about me uh, being naked in the movie because there was a scene in the movie where I had to be like naked in bed and there was going to have maggots all over my body and I wake up from a dream with maggots all over my body like ah, ah! and I was specifically asked if if I had a problem being naked and having maggots all over my body and I said hell yeah <laughs> then then they later revealed oh it'll probably be mealworms it'll probably be mealworms and you know you don't have to be naked you could probably wear pajamas I just remember this because it was such a weird scenario but I do remember Brian Peck telling me when I was putting on the pajamas and the long johns. He was like, hey, um, can I can I walk with you in the bathroom and talk to you about the scene? And I was like, no, it's okay. Let me just go put on the pajamas and all that. I'll talk to you when I get out. He's like, well, we, we don't have a lot of time. You know, just while you're getting dressed and putting on the pajamas and the long johns, um, you know, let me go in the bathroom with you at, at this house. We we're at a little house. I'm like, no, it's fine. He's like, oh, wait, I got to talk to you. You know, I got to see what you're going to do. No, it's fine. So we finished the maggot scene. Then Brian tells me, hey, man, um, let me let me help you undress you. And I can look for maggots or mealworms if they crawled into your your outfit or your pajamas. And if they got in there, he's like, let me go in there with you while you're you're taking it off. So I can if anyone got in there, I'll see it. You know, because they're hard to see and you're wearing like blue and white. And let me go in the bathroom with you while you undress and I, I can check for maggots, you know, from your backside or whatever. 
I'm like, no! And the weird thing is, when I first looked into this about a month ago on IMDb, he went to the Willie's movie page. It said Brock Richards as self. But somebody's changed that since then, and it's only been about a month. Now, if you go to the Willie's movie page, it says Brian Peck as Brock Richards self. But if you go to Brian Peck's page, the Willie's doesn't show up as an actor credit in his previous movies list. It only shows up as a credit for producer, director, writer. Now, I don't know why that's changed, but I think it's weird. You say tomato, he says tomato. This is Brock Richards. We're at the home of local farmer Horace Fivey to talk to him about a special fertilizer he's invented, a fertilizer that's the envy of all the county. Farmer Spivey, tell us a little bit about your miracle manure. Well, I, uh, I've been working on it, I'd say, oh, about 16 years. And uh, it came really into fruition about the last five or so. And just to give an example of what I'm talking about, that there's a carrot. <laughs> you ever see a carrot like that before? I can't say I have. <laughs> no, sirree. Well, all right. <laughs> well, Mr. Spivey, we wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, this is quite a miracle manure, as he calls it, a fertilizer the likes of which this reporter has never seen before, and that's no bull. For KORN News, I'm Brock Richards. Are we still rolling? And about all the letters of support, I was actually waiting to see if anything else came out because there's a few names and a few letters out publicly, but nothing new since. But his old pal, Amy Robertson, who wrote a letter of support for him, had a little role in this movie herself. Please watch your step and enjoy the rest of the day. Please watch your step and enjoy the rest of the day. Please watch your step and enjoy the... Fucking stoned. <laughs>